All right, so let's take a longer look at the Compose button. This is probably the button you're going to use the most when you're in your email. When you hit the Compose button, you have a lot of options that you may not even realize. Number one, you've got your traditional two. Um, when you type in there, so as an example, I'm going to type in Christina. This is basically going to find any Christina that my particular email system uh, has ever emailed. Now, a couple important things here to notice. Number one, most people see names show up in this list and they start to panic or they think that something's wrong in the district because there's a name in there that no longer exists. Um, for example, Art Lewandowski. I have Art Lewandowski's old at fostoria.k12.oh.us email in there. And people will send us emails and say, you know, you guys have it messed up because old people are still in the email system. They aren't. They're in your email system. This section here of your two is an AI. And that AI ingests every single email you've ever emailed and tries to hold it for you, thinking that you want that email available. This email, this Art Lewandowski at fostorius.k12, that email no longer exists. If I email it, it will literally go nowhere. It will send it into the ether. Um, so that's an important thing to think about. For example, Christina Frederick, when I type in Christina Frederick's name, you'll see that there's two. There's a C Frederick and a CH Frederick. Well, she's she, CH Frederick. I accidentally emailed C Frederick. And if this email doesn't exist, I would be emailing the wrong person. So you want to make sure you're emailing the correct person. If you don't, um, if you are emailing the wrong person, you see the wrong email name, I or anyone at the tech department cannot change that. You have to change that. And you change that in your contacts, which I can show you in a separate video. But for right now, just assume when you type this, it will start putting in people who you've emailed in the past or have been in emails. Now, if you want to expand that out, some options here are your CC or your BCC. If you go into the two section and you type all, and if I sent this to all staff, and I have all staff in the two section, one thing that's going to happen is everyone's going to get this email and then we're all going to be in a thread together. So if anyone presses reply all, it's going to go to everyone, like literally every single person. So all 474 people that would be emailed there could theoretically just start a massive conversation. CC is much like two, but the implication there is that you are kind of tagging someone in there for their information. But the important, powerful one is BCC. BCC means in CC and two, everyone can see everyone else that it was sent to. In BCC, no one can see who it was sent to. They only see themselves. But the other powerful thing is if I type a group in there, like all, or maybe I want to send it to FES kindergarten team. If I send it in BCC, each individual in that list, all 15 members of the kindergarten team are going to get that email, but nobody can reply all. They can only reply to me. So that helps um, reduce reply all. So BCC helps reduce reply all. If you throw it into two, it is the wild, wild west. Now, as you go down, you've got your subject. Um, you've got the body. And then you've got all these buttons down here. And most of these are fairly straightforward, like font type. Maybe you want it to be large. Maybe you want it to be bold or underlined or aligned in a particular way. Or you want a numbered list. You also have strike through quotes, and then if you want to remove any formatting. So this is just basically word processing stuff. The interesting stuff of the compose button gets down on this bottom line here. Number one, you can traditionally send. You can also schedule send. So if you want to send it, uh, throw a person in there. I'll just put myself. If you want to schedule send, it will end up giving you this message where you can pick any time and date. So if you have written this out, but you just don't want it to, to hit the uh, inbox till a particular time, you can schedule send it and send it whenever you like. There are formatting options here where you can see them or not see them. Your attachments as to what attachments you would like to throw in. Like I want to attach a file from my computer. 
insert links, insert emojis. If you're an emoji person, it's there. If you want to bring in stuff from your Google Drive, if you want to bring in a photo from your computer or any other place. But then they've added some more uh, unique options. Number one, you can go to confidential mode. If you go to confidential mode, recipients, as it says, will not have the option to forward, copy, print, or download the email. Basically keeps it private and inside the email system. They can't forward it to anybody. They can't copy it. They can't print it. They can't download it. Still would be visible to any of us like uh, in, in terms of keeping your email um, archived. We would still be able to see it, but basically no one else would. You can set an expiration if you if you prefer and then passcodes as it says all passcodes will be generated by google if your person that you're sending this email to as i hover over it does not have a gmail they'll get a passcode and then that passcode can be confirmed through an sms passcode or an email passcode but basically you can secure the email to make sure it's in confidential mode number two you can insert a signature um, you can manage signatures, have no signature or my signature. Now, currently, my signature says, thanks for your time, Matthew Swarczyk. If you go to no signature, it would just get rid of that. But my signature happens to be that. If you want to immediately jump into your settings and manage that, you can click that and go down and select your particular signature. Um, the other cool buttons, selecting a layout, they now have options to select layouts for your, for your email. So for example, if you want there to be an announcement, selecting a layout will delete any changes, no problem. So then it basically gives me a layout that I can go ed edit. I can change the image, I can remove the headers, and this becomes the email template that I'm going to send out. That's a pretty cool feature. Um, you can do default styling and basically pick out various types of, uh, of emails. Then the next one is multi-send mode. So I'm going to close that out. I'm going to recompose. I'm going to hit multi-send mode. So when you toggle on multi-send mode, one thing you'll notice, everything turns purple. And each recipient will get a separate copy of the email with a unique unsubscribe link. Right there. So basically, if you have a newsletter or you have a reason to basically send everyone a separate copy of an email um, in a way that they could turn off um, those types of emails to them where they can unsubscribe from the email list, you can do that now. On the far right, you got your smart compose feedback. That is the part of your email where you might be typing and it can give you uh, suggestions so you can tell the AI how it's doing. When you're typing, you will notice, unless you've turned it off, that you will get an AI that helps you, um, helps you answer your email. So for example, if you look up here, I have Smart Compose writing suggestions on, Smart Compose personalization on, so my AI will predict my writing and try to help me uh, fill it out. Then you've got checking spelling. You can run a spell check. You've got plain text mode. You can request a red receipt. I know some people do like to have a red receipt so they know someone actually read the email. And then you can actually put it in labels and or go full screen if you prefer. So that is the compose button. The important part, like we said, is to make sure that you are sending it to the right person. Um, if you notice that there's something wrong, check out the video on how to remove um, someone from your contacts. And hopefully that was helpful on the compose button.